Okay, YouTube, welcome back to the channel. So let's get right into this video. Let's talk about repenting of your sins and what sin is and what it really does. So the Bible says in John chapter 13, verse 3, that God says, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will likely perish. So what this means is that sin is everything that destroys us. Every sin is something that's against God, who is love, who is good. Sin is all the opposite of what God wants. And the opposite of what God wants is always going to lead to destruction. This is why God says to repent. And this is, wh this is why Jesus came to die for our sins. So we could ask for forgiveness if, and then we could get made holy again. We could get made with, we could get made in communion with God again, right? Every single sin doesn't mean that God is like, oh, you're a disgusting person or you're this. It doesn't mean that. It means that God is a holy God, and whenever he sees you sin, he sees that you're hurting yourself. This is why there, every sin is pride, sexual immorality, right? Uh, gluttony, greed, anger, and there's, there's, pl there's plenty more, right? And all these things go against God, and if you don't repent, if you don't repent of your sins and you see your sin for what it really is, you're going to destroy yourself. This is why it says, unless you repent, you will perish. Because you're going to be taken away from God. You're going to be doing things that are wicked and dark. This is why every sin darkens your life, right? So if you struggle with sexual immorality, and everybody has, because we're naturally sexual beings, right? Like we have a sexual appetite. But God says to wait till marriage. Wait till you're in communion with one person, right? Because if you don't, then you start having sex with everybody. And you start watching, you know, pornography. You start being sexually immoral, the fruits of the sin is going to affect your heart. It's going to darken your life, right? If you look at anyone that's sexually immoral, you're going to see that they're living in darkness. They could likely be addicted to drugs. They could likely turn from righteousness and they could start manipulating other people, right? Because if people are sexually immoral and they're suffering from lust all the time, they're always lusting, they're always lusting. They're going to go from this person to that person to that person to that person, constantly having sex with everybody. All that does is it destroys you. It does nothing good. And the world likes to say that it's a good thing, right? Oh, just have sex with everybody. Just do this and be sexually immoral. Just cheat and do all these things and do all these wicked things. And nobody knows it. It just destroys you. And this is what God tries to say that repent of your sins. Don't go back to your sins, right? But the good news is that Jesus died for our sins. So as long as we ask for forgiveness, we could be made holy again. We could be made righteous again. We could go back to doing what God actually wants for our life. Because sin is living in the flesh, right? And living in the flesh means doing things that please you selfishly, which is pretty much all it means. It's stuff that pleases you sexually. And the flesh has an appetite that's impossible to... It, it has a it has an appetite that's impossible to fulfill the flesh will never be fulfilled and this is all sin is it's something that will never be fulfilled all it does is hurt you and hurt you and hurt you like if you're greedy you're never going to be fulfilled with money or food or like gluttony you're never going to be fulfilled with food you're always going to want more and more and more right so the moral of the story is repent of your sins and know what sin really is sin is what hurts you god does not want you to hurt yourself all these things hurt you and you know this every single sin is going to hurt you like pride Pride comes before the fall, right? Where pride comes is disgrace. Where humility comes is knowledge. God says to turn away from your sin and stop your wickedness. Because if if you do not, you're going to destroy yourself. You're going you're gonna to walk in wickedness. You're going to start to hurt other people. You're going to start to hurt yourself. You're going to damage your body. You're going to damage your spirit. You're going to hurt your soul. You're going to hurt everything, right? And the thing is, that's, that's what sin is. It's everything that's against God because we're creations of God. And if we go against our creator, we're going to have to reap the fruits of what we do. That's, this is why they're sins, right? Because he is a holy and perfect God. And when you, when you sin against a holy and perfect God, you're going to have to see the consequences of that. And if you do live in sin, and everybody that lives in sin lives in darkness. Every single person that lives in sin and does not repent and does not try to turn away from their sin, they're going to live in darkness. They're going to suffer. They're going to, they're going to suffer mentally. They're going to suffer physically. They're going to suffer spiritually. They're going to suffer emotionally. They're going to suffer in every way possible because you're going against the creator and your own self because sin is not a natural thing, right? We are, we are born in sin. 
because the world is fallen. So we're a born in sin, but we have a savior, which is Jesus Christ. And that's the only God. That's the only one true God. If we, if we don't actively turn away and repent from our sins, we're going to have to reap the fruit of these sins. This is why you see so much evil in this world, right? And the devil who is the God of this earth, who is the God of sin, right? The devil does everything opposite of God. So you have an adversary that's completely against you and then you have God who is for you, who is good. So your whole life is going to be a battle with, you know, temptations. The devil is a God of temptation. And when I talk, when I say God, a God of the liturgy, because he's not the creator, but he is, a, he's a fallen angel, right? This is who the majority of the world follow. This is why the world's always talking about to indulge, indulge in everything, you know, Live in your flesh, please yourself, always keep eating, eat as much food as you want, have sex with everybody, be greedy, get as much money as you can, get as many things of this world as you can, while God says the complete opposite. God says not to worry about this world, because the world is temporary, you are temporary. Do not please your flesh, but please your spirit, because the flesh reaps destruction, the spirit reaps eternal life. So God, Jesus Christ is our savior, right? He's the only one that can make us perfect, who can make us see sin for what it really is which is pointless pleasure wicked pleasure and it, and it corrupts you it corrupts you into on a spiritual level this is why if you've if you've ever struggled with sins and it's constant your, your world starts to darken right you're suffering from greed you start to change as a person you suffer from gluttony your, your health is deteriorating your spirit your spirit's getting hurt every single uh sin hurts you spiritually it darkens your life every single sin and Jesus himself said, I am the light of this world. So that's that's where our light is. Jesus Christ is the only light of the world because this world is primarily dark. It's infested with sin. It's infested with going against God. It's infested with wickedness, right? Selfishness. Jesus Christ is our savior. He's the one, he is the light of this world. So when you, whenever you do sin and any sin, there's a conviction in it, especially if you follow Jesus Christ, which everyone that's watching my videos, I hope you do follow our Lord Jesus Christ. But whenever, whenever you do sin, if you, if you don't, if you don't turn away from it, your life is going to, your life is going to just, your life is going to kind of turn into this thing that's dark. And there's, there's many different afflictions that start to happen. Like you start to hurt yourself. Your body's going to start acting up. Your spirit's going to start acting up. You're going to start dealing with spirits of like depression, anxiety. You're going to start dealing with pain in your body. You're going to start dealing with all these things. Cause all these things are against God. So we have to, we have to know for, we have to know what sin really is. Right. And this is, this is why the world is constantly against Christ because not only is Christ the truth, but because Christ is the truth, people have too much pride and pride is another sin, right? And when people do their, the stuff that they know is wrong and sin, if you have any conviction in your spirit, you know that it is wrong. Like whenever you're overeating, you know that it's wrong. If you, if you are falling into temptation with sexual immorality, there's a little feeling in your spirit where you, where you know it's not the right thing to do, right? But the world, has an adversary, which is the devil and the devil likes to deceive everybody and likes to say, Oh, you should indulge. And you know, you should be, have sex with whoever you want. You could get as much money as you want, just obtain as much wealth as you want. You know, you should go do this, do this and do this. And everyone's like, yeah, this is right. This is the right thing to do. And everyone starts to hate God. Right. While God, on the other hand, says these things, not because he hates, he hates you. He says these things because if you don't, if you don't follow, you're going to destroy yourself. You're going to live a dark life. And that's what God doesn't want because God is pure light. God is love. If you go, if you go to darkness and live in darkness all the time, the only thing it's going to do is hurt you. It's going to deceive you. It's going to hurt you at the, at the end of, at the end of all your sins. If you don't repent and turn away from your sins, you're going to end up getting destroyed. You're going to perish, right? That's, that's why the Bible, the whole moral of the story of the New Testament of Jesus Christ is to repent of your sins and turn away from this, turn away from wickedness, turn away from pleasing your flesh because the flesh will never be pleased. 
The flesh just wants more and more and more until it destroys you. So it's it's a war against our spirit and, and our flesh. Our spirit is strong and wants to wants to live and wants to prosper. For our flesh has temptations, easily falls into temptation, easily easily gets manipulated, right? Our flesh our flesh just wants, 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 and never gets enough. It's, it never gets enough. Our flesh our, our flesh is sin. While our spirit is completely different. Our spirit says not to succumb to these, not to not to live in the sin, not to always in, not to indulge, right? Not to do this, not to do that. So our flesh is willing, but our I mean our spirit is willing, but our flesh is strong. So this is why repentance, you need to repent. You you need to actively pray to God and ask for forgiveness and say admit that you are a sinner, you are sinning, and that you need Jesus Christ to help you. And then if once you do this, once you accept Jesus Christ as God, once you accept Jesus Christ as God, he'll send the Holy Spirit and you'll start to see things for what they really are. Your spirit will start to strengthen because God only cares about your spirit. He doesn't care about your flesh. This is why God never talks about pleasing your flesh, never talks about indulging yourself in these. God, God always talks about to avoid these temptations and live in your spirit so you could have eternal life, so you could live. Because the spirit, so, the spirit is a thing that is eternal. The flesh is just dust, right? Your flesh is just dust. Your flesh doesn't doesn't know any better. Your flesh just wants to survive. It wants to do whatever it wants. But your spirit is eternal. And God wants to take you to what is eternal. The devil wants to say, oh, just live in the flesh, right? Which is temporary and destroys you. Which is insatiable. The flesh is insatiable. If you if you live in the flesh all the time, it's you're never going to be satisfied. Ever. It doesn't matter how much you do. The flesh, you'll, you'll, you'll be satisfied for a temporary amount of time that's going to want more and then it's going to want more and more and more and more and more. The flesh is, the flesh is pretty much like an addiction kind of, right? So this is why you got to live in the spirit. This is why you have to obey God. This is why God cares about your obedience the most. And God said, because God knows that you could easily fall into temptation. That's why he says to obey because he'll make, he'll make your strength perfect if you obey, right? But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this is what sin is. Sin is literally what God does not want you to do. Not because he hates you. Not because he says you're disgusting or you're this. Which is what a lot of the world thinks is everything gets twisted, right? In the world. He doesn't want you, he doesn't want you to sin because it hurts you. Every single sin is it hurts you. Every single sin takes you from God. Every single every single sin takes you from true happiness, true fulfillment. All these sins will never fulfill you ever. No no amount of greed, no amount of sexual immorality, no amount of pride. None of these sins will do anything. These are like, these are bootleg, right? And they're from the devil. These are bootleg. They don't do anything. They don't bring anything but destruction. So, which is what the enemy wants, wants for you. He wants you destroyed, right? Because the, the Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He only wants you destroyed. He doesn't want you to reap eternal life. He doesn't want you to, he doesn't want you to have any strength to not succumb to these worldly things and all this flesh and all these things that are pointless that don't fulfill anyone that only hurts you right this is this is why this is why god says to repent 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 just repent of your sins otherwise if you don't repent you will perish and this holds true because the bible is true the word of god is true so but yeah, i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'm going to be talking more about this topic in my videos, I figured I should talk more about sin and what sin really is and why you need to repent because it's, it's not a joke. Sins are not a joke. You know that if you, if you do sin, you know that your life starts to darken. It, it just gets darker. Your spirit gets hurt. You get hurt in many different ways. Sin, all it does is hurts you. It's a lie. Sin is pretty much equivalent to what drugs are, right? Every drug gives you something that you think is going to help, but really it's destroying you. Every single drug, every single addiction. You may think it's giving you something like a temporary form of comfort, but really it's destroying 99 other things about you. So this is what sin is. And this is why God wants you to stay away from sin. He wants you to repent and stay away and just obey what he says, right? But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. All right, God bless you guys and stay strong.